She was supposed to be playing basketball, cheering the junior prom committee, and getting good grades while working at the local coffee shop. And she was doing all that, thankfully, so she was too busy to, for anything else. Or so I deluded myself. Yeah, I'm not going to dwell on that statement or else I'm going to end up giving myself a concussion because I'm going to keep beating myself over the head with this book. I'll take your glasses next time. Thank you. I was in the Alaska's capital city, Juneau, during my oldest daughter's junior year of high school, preoccupied the enormous job of being governor of the lo nation's largest state. Okay, Palin, just because it's the biggest state does not mean it's the most populated state. Well, she just said the largest. I know, but it's not like the enormous job. I mean, let's take Wyoming, for example. Wyoming is bigger than New York. And yet Wyoming has, like, a fraction of the population of New York. Does that make it a huge job of being, like, the governor of Wyoming than being the governor of New York? No. It's like, well, my state's bigger than your state, so my job is more important. But you have, like, less people. Nope, mine's bigger than yours. And that's what he said. Uh... Preoccupied with being the governor of the nation's largest state, juggling Scott schedules around Todd's 1,500 miles job, 100, yeah. Juggling schedules around Todd's job, 1,500 miles away from the North Slope oil field, saluting and worrying about our son's decision to enlist as an infantryman in the U.S. Army, and busy with our younger states while wrapping my arms around the fact that we'd soon be joined by our newest family member, Trig. I assumed that Bristol was only making wise decision while staying with my sister in Anchorage. I kicked myself to this day for the selfish assumption. I made a mistake. What mistake? That she apparently trusts her daughter. With her sister? Yeah. I... That's... I don't get selfish? it either. I don't get it either. It's... How is that a selfish assumption? What does that even mean? Bring in the logic probe! Oh my god, that logic probe joke's gonna get old really soon, but I don't know what else to say. The night our beautiful, pres perfect, precious grandson, Trip Easton Mitchell, came into the world was a cold one. As December nights in Alaska typically are, because the new father wasn't there because of Bristol's labor, I helped deliver Trip. As I cut the cord between my daughter and her son, I was overwhelmed with warmth and wonder. I couldn't trade the experience for anything. But at the same time, I knew I should be... It should have been happening ten years from then. A contradiction? Whoa, a contradiction in a Palin book? No way. Perhaps. But Trip is a dream. He is the most beautiful baby I've ever seen. Yeah, suck it, Trig. Trip's more beautiful than you are. Or Trig. Trig? Yeah. TR, T, track and trig, whatever. Why are they all TR? It's track, trick, trig, trip. Yeah, try saying that five times fast. Didn't take long after that magical night, however, for both new parents to realize how much work and how little fun teenage parenting is. Okay, we're just saying it was a big mistake. Why are you calling it a magical night now? Consistency! Have some, please! But my song, Strong, Beautiful Bristol, reacted in a way that made me proud. She went to college and worked full-time. She took care of... Hmm, excuse me? Excuse And took care of needy, clickety baby through many sleepless nights, doctor's appointments, and lonely car ride, cold, lonely cold car rides to and from babysitters. She worked as hard as any young single mother could have possibly worked. Of course, we all had to bite our tongues more than once as Tripp's father went on a media tour through Hollywood and New York spreading untruths and exaggerated rhetoric. It was disgusting to watch his 15 minutes of fame that were exploited by supposed adults taking advantage of a lost kid. But we knew him well enough to see that he was confused at dirt, how confused he was during it at the times, and our hearts broke for him as and the price he would pay. So, he's spreading quote-unquote untruths and exaggerated rhetoric, and your hearts are breaking for him for being confused and... I think it'd be best if you just moved on. Yeah, I agree. 
along with our sorrow, of course, with some justifiable anger as well. Whoa, really? The lies told about our family on national television were outrageous. It was excruciating for Trek to read ugly things about his sister, parents, and baby brother while he was in a war zone and unable to do anything about it. Here, there he was, half a world away, protecting everyone's freedom of speech and securing Americans' freedom of the press, while that freedom was being abused to perpetrate lies about his family. Man, she's really starting to let out all the abuse on the press and media right now. How many more pages for this chapter? Uh, a lot, I'm assuming. Let's see. Yeah, we got about 20... It's eight more pages. <sighs> hey, you wanted to sit through this. Yeah. All right. It was disheartening, too, for our young teen Willow to witness what her sister was going through. It broke our hearts to watch some of Piper's innocence erode away. And I confess I felt embarrassment, too. We were a normal family. This wasn't supposed to happen to us. You are not a normal family. I hoped and prayed that my family would come through this challenge intact. There were times when I wasn't sure, when it was everything Tom and I could not do but lash out at the forces threatening our family. More than once I thought, how could this be worth it? Let's just go to Wasilla and stop feeding the media beast. I think that's one. Yeah, calling the media beast, that's that's kind of uh, hard to ignore. So, let's give ourselves and our family a break. And I knew that came across something written by an American who knew little, a little something about adversity. Helen Keller, she wrote, Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired, and success achieved. No, I won't make a Helen Keller joke. I'm sorry, people. I'm not that mean. If I didn't know before what she truly meant, I know now. The past couple of years truly revealed character. We've all made mistakes. Tripp's father went through a time of apologizing for his statements, and Bristol, with her characteristic generosity of heart, accepted the assumed sincere apology. Wait. Assumed sincere... She basically saying, like, he apologized, but I don't believe it's true. I think he's just lying, because we're making money now from our reality show. I think it's foreshadowing for later in the book. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, I'll just go. I'll just go. <laughs> it's been two years of struggling to atone, trying to be patient, remembering to love each other, and watching them wonder as little Trip grows up. I'm not saying I'd want to do absolutely everything again, but in the end, what Keller, Helen Keller said was right. We've emerged a stronger, more united family. For others who might be going through challenging times, you might feel like what you may feel like I did when a friend thought it would be helpful to share the pale and dirt she read from anonymous bloggers on the internet one day. She cheerily encouraged to hang in there, though. Surely your reward is in heaven. I looked at her as if she was an idiot, gritting through the clench of teeth, and I assured her we'd definitely hang in there. But that particular moment, I thought I'd rather God keep the reward than wait in the hereafter. I'd rather have peace on earth for my daughter than an extra ruby in my crown. Moving on. As a matter of fact, if you discount the screaming headlines and lurid magazine covers, ours has been a typical American story. It may not have been because of an unplanned pregnancy that grows on a national stage under a scorching spotlight, but everyone ends up in a foxhole once in a while. It may be the battle for your health, your marriage, your business, your community, or your country, but we all have our battles to fight. And if you're lucky enough to found a temporary hill hilltop, Upon to avoid the bloody engagement for a bit, then your duty is to assist and defend someone who's caught up in the war. I blessed to have a wonderful family who's kept me on my hilltop. They're the best line of defense as well as my motivation to keep fighting. Otherwise, what's the point? It's funny about being a parent. Having a baby is life-changing and even event for the couple going through it. But it's a pretty ho-hum thing for the rest of the world. Your little miracle is just another screaming infant to just about everyone else. This comic, the comic geniuses, the comic geniuses at the Onion captured this paradox hilariously with a with a Faust, yeah, Faust article 
signal, miracle, yeah, miracle of birth occurs for the 83 billionth time. She's actually going to quote The Onion. Really? It's a very popular source of information. It's fake, but it's a very popular source. Okay. She's quoting The Onion now. She's gone from quoting presidents to quoting a satirical news source. If there is any reason you shouldn't take this book seriously, that was it. Hope's Rings are Arizona. The holy and sacrosanct miracle of birth, long revered by human civilization as the most mysterious and magical of all phenomena, took place for what experts are estimating must be the 83 billion time. Tuesday, with the successful delivery of 8-pound, 4-ounce baby boy, Daryl Brandon Severson at the Holy Mary Mother of God Hospital. This milestone was achieved by Carla Severson, 32, an unemployed cosmetology school graduate and homemaker, and her husband of 14 years, Dwayne Severson, also 32, a former screen door factory worker and freelance lawn care contractor. The miraculous birth is the couple's fifth. I love that. The miraculous birth is the couple's fifth. But the truth is, every baby's a miracle, whether he is planned, or whether she is wanted, and... Uh, every baby's a miracle, whether it's planned or wanted, and yet she's saying that it was unfortunate that her daughter got pregnant before... Excuse me one moment, people. Glasses? No. No, I'll, I'll be right back. Do not take more than four in one hour. Thing that's keeping me sane. Now shut up. You didn't even drink anything. And? I'll do whatever I want. I'm reading Palin's book. Okay. Let's see, where are we last left off? Okay. I love that. The miraculous birth is the couple's fifth. But the truth is, every baby's a miracle, whether she is planned and whether she is wanted. Every baby isn't easy. Quite the opposite is true. And everyone who's had a baby isn't necessarily ready to be a parent. But every child is a gift of life that is capable, so we let her of working miracles on us. I don't make a practice of quoting myself. Yeah, because you really don't have anything to quote, you just quote everybody else. But I'm making an exception here because I think this is the most true of my of this is true of most Americans. In my memoir, Going Rogue, I wrote on April 20th, 1989, my life truly became. I became a mom. What? But if so, becoming a parent is when your life truly begins. It doesn't happen when you're in school, when you're being raised by your parents. It's when you become a parent, apparently. I'm not an adult now? Nope, apparently not. Damn. And apparently your life has not begun because you are not a parent, neither am I. No! 